guys, I'm Casey and I am one half of the team that runs the travel website wegoandplaynow.com or Wagopin as we refer to it as. So I am currently in the midst of planning a 12 month working holiday to Japan starting next May and going until May 2015. So I'm starting all my preparations now and I wanted to start documenting some of them and I've started doing a few blog posts on Wagopin um, so you can go and check those out. But I'm also going to be doing some video posts as well. Today what I'm going to be talking about is the working holiday visa application process. So I just first wanted to say a little disclaimer. I'm Australian um, and so my application process would be different than if you're coming from a different country. So Australia and Japan have an agreement for a 12 month working holiday. So a working holiday is basically one where you, the majority of your trip um, should be holidaying and really the working side of it is just to fund your travels further. So they don't like you to apply for a working holiday visa if you're planning on kind of working full time or for the whole time that you're there. Um, in that particular case they're going to encourage you to get a working visa uh, and working visa you do need to get sponsorship from someone who's going to employ you when you get over there. Um, so just be aware of that. So the working holiday visa um, program between Japan and Australia is for 18 to 30 year olds. So you can apply for it up to the age of 31. So as long as at the time that you apply, you're 30, um, then that's fine. And then once you actually get your visa, you have a year to enter Japan. Now there are many other countries that I think have a very similar agreement um, with Japan. Um, as Australia does, I think it's the United Kingdom, Canada, um, there is a list of them somewhere on the internet so if you're not from Australia and you're interested in going on a working holiday to Japan, um, you just have a look and just see whether the working holiday visa um, is applicable um, for you. There is actually nine things that you need for your application. So the first thing is a valid passport. Um, you just need to make sure that it is valid for um, six months after you arrive back in Australia. So then you've got a visa application form. It's just got general questions like your name, your passport number, um, how long you're planning on staying in Japan, what your current job is, what's your address, and whether or not you've ever been convicted of any crimes. Um, so that's just a standard application form. Um, it's two pages takes you five minutes to fill out if that. So that section is nice and easy. So section number three, we've got our curriculum vitae or resume. Um, so you need to just have a um, typed copy of your resume to put in with your application. Now I actually decided to redo my resume um, specifically for this application. They're looking for personal history, they're looking for um, work history and they're looking for educational history. So I kind of fleshed out the personal history section because in my normal resume I don't have that. So really I think they're just looking for to know just kind of your general work history and um, whether or not you look like you might be employable. So section number four is a letter explaining the purpose of your visit. So this needs to be um, typed and it needs to be at least half an A4 page. So really they're just looking um, for why you want to go to Japan. So next we have section 5 which is your proposed schedule in Japan. I basically want to see that you've done some research into exactly what you want to be doing. They want to know for each month which area you want to be in and in that area what you want to be doing. Your schedule can change so you don't need to feel like you're locked into what you've written in your application. Section 6 is flight details. So you need to show that you have booked a flight to and from Japan. Um, if you haven't booked a flight yet, um, you actually don't need to book it before you put in the application. You just need to show that you've got enough money in your bank for a return flight. Um, so in the next section, in section 7, um, is your financial um, statement. So for an application for a single person, you need to have a um, three months um, bank statement showing that you've got at least two and a half thousand dollars in your bank account and if you're a couple you need to show you that you've got three and a half thousand dollars in a bank account um, so if you haven't booked your flight yet what you can do is just add an extra 1500 bucks to that amount 
So um, as long as as a single person you've got $4,000 in your bank account or as a couple you've got $5,000 in your bank account, um, then that'll be enough for them. So either book your flights and have them confirmed um, or just have a little bit of extra money in your bank when you're um, applying for the visa. Okay, so booking the flights themselves, um, I will do a separate either blog post or video post um, on Wagopin because there, there is a few things that I'd like to um, explain about booking flights, especially that far in advance. So like I just mentioned, uh, section 7 is your financial statement. Um, so you just need to show that you've got the correct amount of money in your bank account and that you've been saving um, this amount for a period of at least three months. Um, and one thing to note in this section that lump sums won't, won't do. So you can't just go and sell something stick your two and a half thousand in the bank and then show them that and say, okay, this is my savings. What they want to see is that over a period of three months, you've actually put effort into saving that money. Okay, section eight is your declaration of intent. Um, basically, you just have to sign it and say, I understand the rules of the visa application and that's it. So the other part of this declaration is just that you need to include uh, two contacts. So you need to have two people that you know that live in Japan. Um, just to be, they're not, they're not sponsoring you or anything, all they're doing is providing their name, address and contact phone number. I was lucky enough to have a friend of my uncle, and she was quite willing to be my contact. She lives in Tokyo and she will actually be showing me around as soon as I arrive in Japan, so I'm very excited about that. And my second contact was actually a lady who I have been friends with on Flickr um, for quite a few years. And I'm also going to go visit her in Yokohama. Um, so then section 9, which is the final section, is a letter from a contact in Japan. So all they really need to say is um, that they know you and that they're willing to be a point of contact if necessary. So that pretty much is the application process. So as long as you have all of those parts, then all you need to do is go back to the consulate. You need to do this in person. You can't send it in by mail unless you live in a regional area. And just remember to take all your bits and pieces in and also take your original passport with you. So once it's handed in, you'll have to wait around five days for them to process your application. Um, and then just also be aware that if for any reason you don't get uh, the visa, they won't refund you any money for anything that you've already um, like booked over there. So what I'm doing at the moment is I am only booking things that are for in the first three months um, of my trip. So that way, for any reason I do get denied the visa, then I can still go over on a 90-day tourist visa and I can still do the things that I booked in that three months and then just go home at the end of it. But fingers crossed, <laughs> I get the 12 months. So I think that's pretty much it. If you've got any questions, um, please feel free to just ask them in the comments below um, and I will answer them for you. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you again soon. <laughs> ご案内いたします。この飛行機はまもなく離陸いたします。シートベルトをもう一度お確かめください。